There are some fascinating political battles, Democratic primaries that are shaping up, including one now in Wisconsin. It features, well, our guest, Tom Nelson. He's a longtime member of the state assembly. He is the county executive of Outagami, Wisconsin, and he's the most progressive in this race. Tom, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. First of all, you started doing this 16 months ago? Yes, so October 26 of 2000, I think we were the first Senate candidate to get in. We got in because I had a sneaking suspicion that Ron Johnson, my neighbor to the south by 20 minutes, was gonna run for reelection despite telling people, telling voters that he was only gonna serve two terms. And I got in because someone had to hold this fellow accountable from day one. And that's part of what this campaign has been doing for the last 16 months. Now he is, of course, has decided that he is gonna run. Uh, there's uh, some, by some estimates, something like 40% of the electorate in Wisconsin will include um, people who essentially live in what would be called factory towns. There are a lot mm -hmm. of uh, moderate, sometimes centrist workers, sometimes white voters who voted for Donald Trump. What is your appeal to them? Well, I'm the only one who comes from a red part of the state and I've won elections six times, three as a legislator and three as a county executive. And as county executive, I've worked very, very closely with paper mill workers, union workers and so forth. In fact, I grew up, I grew up on a blue collar neighborhood in Little Chute, Wisconsin. And so all the dads there were paper workers, except for my dad, he was a Lutheran pastor. So I like to say he wore the white collar. But as county executive, I stood up and I fought for those workers. I helped save a paper mill in combined locks across from where I grew up because I teamed up with the labor union to take on a big bank, a scrap dealer. We brought this mill back to life and we were able to save 300 jobs. And I did it and we recounted in this great book that I, that I re, re, released last year called One Day Stronger. And it's a testament to how you can get together, you can get local government workers, small business together, you can take control of your fate and save mills. Just like the factory towns, just like these communities all over Wisconsin, all over the country where you've seen all this manufacturing loss. And part of the reason why we've lost those jobs and why Democrats have lost those votes is because the Democratic Party has failed to stand up for the paper mill workers in places like Outagamie County and around the state and around the country. And that is the secret. That is the secret to govern well, and that's also the secret to win this US Senate race. You have to have someone who has had the experience, a track record of taking on Republicans in their backyard and winning not once, not twice, but six times and doing it by taking up the cause and champion manufacturing workers and labor workers. It does seem over the last couple of decades that the union rights have taken a beating thanks to Wisconsin Republicans. Is that starting to swing back around? I think so. I think it's been taken as well. I mean, you know, you know, Wisconsin here, we were at the epicenter. I mean, this was where Act 10 happened 11 years ago, 11 years ago this month. And that was the beginning of the downfall of the labor movement in Wisconsin and other places around the country. But we're beginning to see a resurgence. We're seeing a resurgence here in Wisconsin and all over the country, whether it's the Starbucks workers, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's a number of people that are taking control of their own fate and it has this momentum. And so you're seeing what's happening today as a bookend to what happened here in Wisconsin 10 years ago. And I see that not just in other parts of the state though, but around Outagamie County and around our state too. And I think it bodes very well. And this is one example of how the politicians are not keeping up with the people. The people are ahead of us. We know that the uh, that a majority of workers want to be in a union, that they're organizing that they're taking upon themselves to do it. It's the politicians, elected officials that have to get into Washington to pass the PRO Act, to crack, to get rid of Taft-Hartley, to make sure that every single worker has the right to organize. That is the missing piece. And Wisconsin is gonna be an important race because this is where control of the US Senate will be decided. And you have to have a real progressive, a real progressive who has gotten elected in a tough part of the state and has done it six times and someone that workers can count on because they've been there for them before. The argument from the more centrist Democrats and probably even from the Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes, who is I suppose perhaps the front runner in the Democratic primary, the argument is, oh no, you have to be more centrist in order to appeal to some of these Republicans. What's your best case against your fellow Democrat Mandela Barnes? I mean, that's just lazy. That is just absolutely lazy. And, and I'll tell you what, how I stand aside, I'm not only am I the progressive candidate, but I'm the only one who's gotten elected and reelected six times and in a tough part of the state. If you want to win Wisconsin, you have to do well in Outagamie County. And I've been winning elections here left and right for the last 17 years. The whole issue about how you have to be a moderate, 
how you have to be a centrist. No, Democrats cannot be lazy. All you have to do is know how to talk about progressive values, not just with Democrats, but with independents and lean Republicans. And that's what I've been doing for the last 17 years of my life. The only way I could get elected as a progressive in a Republican county, which by the way was Joe McCarthy's old county, is if I can work well with Republicans and be able to do this and pass a progressive agenda. I've done it as a legislator, I've done it as county executive, and I think I can do it as a US Senator. Speaking of talking about these progressive issues, you support Medicare for all, Green New Deal, union rights, taxing the rich, voting rights. Which one of these is your priority and how do you explain it to voters? That's really tough. You know, I look at three things. I, I look at economic security, health security, and climate change. I like to say that, you know, we need to have access to, to good jobs, a strong economy. But what good is economic security if you don't have health security? We need universal health care. We need Medicare for all. And what good is health security and a good job if you don't have a planet? We need a Green New Deal. And Wisconsin's well positioned because this is the birthplace of a modern day environmental movement, and we're also one of the largest manufacturing states in the country. We are well positioned to lead on a Green New Deal because we do it by forging a blue green coalition of labor and the environment together. Because in order to achieve a Green New Deal, we have to retool the economy. The only way to retool the economy is if we do it with new jobs, good union jobs. Some of the political reporters in Wisconsin have suggested, that despite your background, which looks pretty slick to me, pretty sharp, that you are the non-slick candidate in the Democratic race. You had an ad apparently in which you were having a garage sale to raise money for your campaign. Um, how does that play? I think this is what I think. This is the candidacy, and I believe I'm the candidate that Wisconsinites love. I mean, you know, you know, they have they have supported underdogs before, people like Bill Proxmire way back, people like Russ Fungo, folks that didn't have money. They weren't a millionaire, they weren't a billionaire, they didn't have have a lot of name recognition, but they were reflected Wisconsin values. I mean, my experience is their experience. I grew up in a blue collar neighborhood in a small town of Little Shoot. I understand the needs of working families. You know, I am who I am. I don't need to, you know, pretend and and I think people like that. And it also goes back to the point about being a moderate or being a centrist or being being a progressive. People just want someone who is consistent and who is genuine. And I like to project that. And that's also my my opponent Mandela Barnes, he's saying one thing before he runs for for lieutenant governor and now he's saying a different thing. And I'll tell you what, just like you can't kid a just like you can't kid a kidder, you cannot fool a voter. And that's going to be a problem. What specifically did he say before as Lieutenant Governor that he's now flip flopped on? Well, he's been talking about how Medicare for all is important, the Green New Deal is important. Now you can't get him to say those words at all. Um, he seemed like he was for defunding the police, and now he says he's not for defunding the police. He wanted to abolish ICE, now, now he doesn't want to. It. I think he's just confused. I think he's entirely confused. And I'll tell you what, this is for all the marbles. This is for all the marbles. Democrats have got to get this election right. If Wisconsin, if if Democrats don't win Wisconsin, we won't keep the US Senate. You need to have someone who knows where they stand, who is consistent, who has a track record, who has won in tough years and in tough parts of the state. I've done that six times. And part of the track record, part of the track record of the Republican incumbent Ron Johnson have been his strange and I would say dangerous positions on COVID-19, on vaccines, on health. And yet in Outagami County, where you are, your county is what AAA rated, has has fared the best, perhaps in the state. Um, how important is that contrast? And what are you hearing from Wisconsin voters about that competency in terms of managing this epidemic? Yeah, I mean, I win that argument hands down. I mean, uh, you know, because of Ron Johnson, because of Donald Trump, there was no leadership from Washington in 2020. Because of the Republican legislature here in Wisconsin, the governor, Governor Evers, has not been able to follow through on basic things to keep us safe. And so it's fallen to local officials, it's fallen to county officials, uh, mayors, county executives, healthcare um, officials who've been on the front lines fighting the pandemic. That's what we've, we've, uh, what we've, been doing. We've had to set up our own vaccination clinics, our own testing clinics. We've been able to do that. And we've been able to do that while maintaining a AAA bond rating. We've had a declining tax rate for the last six years, fully funded all our services, fully funded all of our public services. I have um, I have an international airport that's worth $700 million of economic activity, help save a paper mill. 
we have done a lot of really good things here in Allegheny County. And one thing you have to get from voters is you have to get their trust and you have to get the confidence. And a big reason why I believe I keep on getting returned as county executive because I've shown I have shown voters that I can govern responsibly, I can get results, and here we are. We have a lot of great things to be proud of. The primary is in August in Wisconsin. Take us through what the campaign looks like between now and then, and are you optimistic that regardless of who wins the Democratic primary, that the Democrats will unify to beat Ron Johnson in the fall? You know, people ask me, so if you don't get the nomination, uh, will you support the or will you support the nominee? And my answer is I will work twice as hard. Mm. And one of the reasons why I will work twice as hard, and I've said this again and again, and this is a big reason why I got into this race 16 months ago, is I think that there are clear differences. There are very clear differences among the candidates. And there are some of us who are well positioned to win in November against Ron Johnson, and some of us who are not. And so if I don't get the nomination and do everything I can to get the nomination, I believe some of these other folks may not be well they may not be well positioned. And so I will have to work that much more harder. But I am committed to do whatever it takes to make sure that this seat goes blue. And in the meantime, you're going, I suppose, to every town and every county in Wisconsin. Retail politics is pretty important there. Yep, and last year we are the, I mean, we are the 72 county campaign. And so last year I did a 72 county listing session tour, did it in 43 days. Mm -hmm. And so this is the grassroots campaign. This is the people's campaign and we're gonna continue to get out there, get our message out there, meet as many folks as possible, talk as many folks as possible, not just Democrats, Republicans and Democrats. That's a winning formula. Well, Tom, good luck to you. It is a fascinating race to watch. Tom Nelson, he is the chief executive of Outagamy, County, Wisconsin. Uh, he is the progressive in the Democratic primary, which is August the 9th. Winner takes on Ron Johnson in the fall. Uh, Tom, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Good to be on. Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. We really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.